This edition of Mac Voices is sponsored by Simple Contacts. Lenses you need, office visits you don't. For $20 off your first order, visit simplecontacts.com slash macvoices or use the code macvoices at checkout. Hi, I'm Chuck Joyner, and this is a Mac Voices briefing on five non-tech travel tips. Folks, you can probably tell by the number of conference shows I've been doing over the past few months that there's been a substantial amount of travel involved. Um, and of course, over the summer, there's also travel for vacation. There's been some business travel as well. And I find that there's some travel tips I really would like to share with you, some things I think that will make your travel life a little easier. So I'm going to break them down into categories and also not give you more than about five at a time, simply because beyond five and people stop paying attention to six through ten. And I really would like for you to, to benefit from all of these. So I'm going to start out this briefing uh, with five non-tech travel tips. These are things that can be used by anyone. You don't have to be a tech tech user. You don't have to be an Apple user. You don't have to be a Mac or iPhone or iPad user. Uh, just things that I think will make your life potentially easier. And also, some of these are based on things that I've seen other people do and making mistakes that sometimes drive me a little crazy. And so hope, hopefully this will, will help me be... Uh, a little have a little catharsis as well as giving you some good tips. So let's get started. Mark your luggage. I know, I know, you think that your black bag or red bag or blue bag or whatever color bag will not look like anyone else's as it comes off uh, of the baggage carousel and that you'll be able to recognize it right away. No, it won't. I'm appalled at the number of people that are constantly grabbing bags and pulling them up off and then have to throw them back on simply because they need to check the ticket. Make your bag something easy to see from a distance, please, for your sake and my sake. Now you can buy all sorts of little gadgets and things that will wrap around the handle or straps that go around it or whatever. The problem is that those can come off or be removed. Happily, airport security has gotten a bit better with uh, luggage. Uh, and so stolen luggage is not quite the issue, maybe at least at the airport, that it may have been in the past. But still, I would like to make it even tougher or maybe not as attractive for somebody to take or mistake your luggage for theirs. So it's simple. Just get yourself a Sharpie. If you have black or red or any, any dark color, get yourself a silver Sharpie and draw some kind of design on it that is somewhat unique to you. This is my luggage. I mark my luggage with silver di a silver diamond on every single face because you never know which face is going to be facing what at any given moment. Now, as you can see, these are not really great silver diamonds. Um, I never claim to be an artist. But the point is that I can see these uh, very easily from a distance. In fact, it's not an uncommon thing anymore if I'm the, on the correct side of the plane to watch my luggage being loaded into the plane and being able to recognize it from that distance. Same thing when it comes to uh, being on the baggage carousel. I can look right down as it comes through the little door and know that it's mine. Um, and hopefully other people are paying attention and aren't grabbing mine as much. Since I started doing this, I find that my luggage is being mistaken for others a lot less. Now, you can do whatever you want. Uh, you, can, you can do designs, you can do names, you can do a word, hopefully a good word. Um, whatever it is, but make it something that is unique. And I, I really like the, the Sharpie thing simply because it can't be removed. You will have to reapply it every so often because it does wear off with all the, the baggage handling. Um, but it is something that just absolutely cannot be taken off. And so as a result, nobody's going to mistake your bag for theirs. Nobody's going to pick yours up. And if you do see somebody taking your bag, it's going to be a lot easier to identify it again from a distance. This is such a simple thing. And I know some of you are going to say, yeah, but I just paid all that money for this luggage and you want me to mark it up and deface it right away. I have never seen anyone in any airport say, you know, I'm not too wild about that guy's outfit or that lady's outfit, but boy, their luggage really looks good. 
don't worry about it. Just it's much more important to know exactly where your luggage is and what it looks like. And that goes for carry-on as well as check luggage. Because if you're flying regional uh, jets, sometimes you have to gate check your luggage and it's a lot easier to look out on the on the rack and see whatever it is that your uh, your design is or your mark is uh, than just to start pulling things off and trying to figure out whether it's yours. One last thing. I have seen people take this to an extreme where they put big signs that uh, or big markings on their luggage, just like I am doing the sharp with the sharpie, saying this is not your luggage. Well, okay, that's a little extreme, but you know that too can be uh, can be misconstrued if a lot of people were to adopt that. So find a symbol or a sign or something that you like and that you can see, and please mark your luggage. Prepare for your trip with reading or other materials. Folks, as much as I want to be polite to my seatmates on a plane or in any other vehicle, a lot of times, especially plane travel, is a time for me to get some work done or maybe catch up on just a little bit of sleep because sleep always seems to be in short supply when you're traveling. So again, I want to be polite, but I want to be kind of left alone to get some stuff done. And whenever I see someone sit down beside me and they have absolutely nothing in their hands and seem intent on talking their way through a two or three hour flight, uh, I, I, I get the shivers. So out of courtesy for your seatmates, please um, find something. Motivational speaker Larry Wingett tells a story about the same thing. He wants to get work done or kind of be left alone a little bit on an airplane. So he takes a book with him and had a custom cover printed up, How to Sell Insurance to People on Airplanes. And he said that you never have seen anybody left alone faster than he is when he has that book out. So take, take a hint, entertain yourself, be productive yourself um, during your travel. I'm delighted to welcome Simple Contacts as a brand new sponsor of Mac Voices this week. I'm a big fan of organizations that are doing things different and disrupting the traditional models of doing business. And Simple Contacts is doing exactly that for contact lens delivery. So here's how it works. When you want or need to renew your prescription, you take a simple, five-minute, simple contacts vision test online. Review your current prescription, pick your brand of contacts, place your order, and that's it. The whole process takes five minutes, and what's so interesting is that it uses your computer and webcam to do the vision test. For the geeks out there, don't worry. Simple contacts gives you an easy way to calibrate your screen so that the vision test is accurate, regardless of whether you're using a 5K Retina iMac or something of a more legacy variety, whether you're using a laptop or a desktop. Audio prompts tell you what to do, and your computer's mic records your answers. The tests were designed by doctors, and licensed ophthalmologists review every test to make sure you get it right. And I mentioned that you pick your brand of contacts. This isn't some no-name contact service. These are the brand names that you know and trust. And this is the perfect time to get an extra box of contacts or two for that trip to the beach, any of your outdoor activities, and all those other summer trips that you are hopefully enjoying. Best of all, Simple Contacts saves you money. The vision exam is only $20, compared with up to $200 if your insurance doesn't cover it. And we all know how insurance can be. They can limit the number of visits, the number of appointments, and put all sorts of conditions and rules in place. You don't have any of that with Simple Contacts. Now let's be very clear on this part. This is not a replacement for your periodic full eye health exam. Simple Contacts tests to see that your current prescription still helps you see 2020, renew that prescription, and helps you save money. They don't write completely new prescriptions or examine eye health. Also under the heading of full disclosure, I don't wear contacts, so I don't have a prescription. But I did take the Simple Contacts vision test to see what it was like, and it was the simplest, and as I said, most fun vision test I've ever had. My girlfriend does wear contacts, and she found the experience of both the vision test and ordering a refill on her prescription simple. The Simple Contacts website takes you through the experience without a hiccup. Simple Contacts is vision care for the 21st century, and it's about time. If you want to live in the 21st century too, and save some money for being a Mac Voices listener, visit simplecontacts.com slash macvoices and save $20 off your first order using the code macvoices. That makes the vision test free, and you're going to love the price of your prescription refills. Again, 
That's simplecontacts.com slash macvoices and the code macvoices to save $20 off your first visit to Simple Contacts. Let me know what your thoughts are on the vision exam process, how it worked for you, and how much money you're saving on your refills. Thanks to Simple Contacts for being the newest sponsor of Mac Voices. Get your boarding pass every way and any way you can. I know, I know, we're all going paperless, and we're all using our phones for everything. Folks, please get your, get your boarding passes in paper, whether you print them at home or more likely when you just go to the airport, check in, check your luggage, get a printed boarding pass. Now, I know they're easier to lose, but they're also easier to use because if the scanner breaks down or if something else happens, your device runs out of, out of juice, you are in trouble because now you have no access to it, you have no way to get on board the plane. This seems to be a problem at fewer and fewer airports, but I still see it where somebody's device won't power up or the scanner won't read their their device, and then somebody's trying to punch it in manually if they can punch it in manually. Um, So I, I always like to have that little slip of paper in my pocket. Yes, it's a pain, but I'm telling you, it, it, it doesn't cost anything extra, and it potentially can save you a lot of time and a lot of trouble. Have a container for all your receipts. This is a simple one, and it serves multiple benefits. Whether it's a manila envelope, a resealable plastic bag, or something, uh, a designated pocket in your luggage even. But find a place where every day or every night you put all of your receipts at the end of the day. So they're all organized. Now, the first benefit is obvious. Now you've got all your receipts in one place. And I don't care if you have to stuff them in crumpled up or flatten them out nicely. That's not the point. The point is to have them all in one place so that if you need to go back and review something, whether it's something you purchased and need to return it, whether you need to just do an accounting at the end of the trip of what your expenses were, um, it's they're all in one place. Second, and probably more important, though, is the identity theft aspect of it. Everything, every time you use your credit card, anything that has a barcode or any kind of code on it that might give uh, the bad guys an idea of who you are and what credit card you use and where you use it, it's better to have those things with you. And that includes not just your credit card receipts from restaurants or stores or whatever, but it also includes your key cards from your hotel. It includes the bag tags uh, from your bags. Uh, from flying, and it can include the boarding passes that we previously mentioned, anything that contains any personal information, personally identifiable information, should go in that bag or pocket or whatever and come home with you. And then as soon as you're finished reviewing everything and are satisfied that you've you've got it all and don't need it anymore, and that includes the key cards, it goes in the shredder so that no information could be out there left uh, laying around. I just went through an airport and watched a lady throw all of her boarding passes in the trash. Hey, the odds are that nobody will ever bother her from an identity theft standpoint, but why take the chance? This is free, simple, easy, doesn't cost a thing. Backpacks and wheels. In my humble opinion, if you are traveling and you aren't using a piece of luggage that has wheels or doesn't have shoulder straps, you're doing it wrong. I'm constantly amazed at the number of people that are carrying duffel bags or small bags with, uh, with a couple handles that they have to hold and grab while they're trying to balance a cup of coffee, something to eat, and maybe their boarding pass. I just don't get it along with that piece of luggage, of course. So if you have something that you can put wheels on or get wheels for, by all means do. And if you don't have something that is uh, a backpack or has shoulder straps, get yourself a small, inexpensive backpack. You don't have to buy something expensive, but get something that you can sling over one shoulder or both shoulders if necessary. And that leaves both hands free to manage whatever it is you need to do, whatever crisis is in front of you. It makes life so much easier. And I watch people take up time and effort. They spill drinks, they make messes of things, and they clearly clearly are not organized. So, backpacks and wheels for your next trip. So those are five my five top non-tech tips uh, for travel. 
I will have some more tips coming up. We'll focus on some apps. We'll focus on some services. We'll focus on some best practices. Um, we'll have a little fun with this. And if you have favorite travel tips, please drop me an email, Chuck at Mac Voices, because I'd like to add them or consider them for my travel. I don't have all the good ideas. I certainly, certainly don't. I'd love to hear yours. Until the next time, and as always, thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Mac Voices Facebook group and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices magazine, free on Flipboard. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us at patreon.com slash macvoices and join these folks who help keep Mac Voices coming to you. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.